my channel thank you all for being here like i appreciate each and every one of you that keeps coming back to watch more content from me i i really appreciate that and thank you so much to my new members like to my members like it's the first time i'm getting members and i'm so grateful to my members for joining my membership feel free if you want to join my membership yeah so today i want to batch cook and the reason why i'm batch cooking today is because most of the time i'm so occupied with work house chores and so many things so i've decided to cook so that uh, whenever i want to eat i don't get to go to the kitchen to cook all the time like it's so overwhelming to be cooking all the time even if it is a passion it's so tiring at some point to be cooking all the time like morning uh, lunch and even dinner so i decided i decided to batch cook some of my fans are uh, complaining that i don't uh, give the exact measurements of the spices that i do use today i'm going to give the exact measurement and the exact portion of meal that i'm going to put those spices in and i'll indicate on the screen the spices that i'm going to use and these are the spices that i'm, I'm going to use cumin turmeric fenugreek like most of my favorite spices that i do use you all know them so those are the ones i'm going to use and the, i'll be cooking a few meals stews it might be beef but different recipes different parts of uh, the, the beef or uh, anything so that is what i'm going to do so stick around i hope you get to enjoy this video and if you do please give me the thumbs up share it widely as we begin cooking these foods to begin with, I'm going to cook these traditional vegetables. These are saga that I got recently. They are very fresh and they are already washed. And then I have a half teaspoonful of cumin powder, half teaspoonful of garam masala, half teaspoonful of turmeric, half teaspoonful of cumin powder, and also some cardamom the same uh, amount of it i'm going to use that in cooking my tenderloin that tenderloin really doesn't need over spicing because we want to retain the uh, natural flavors of beef as we also get other flavors from uh, the spices so i'm going to actually use those i'm not using the onion and garlic powder because with this dish these are the spices that i want to use in making that dish i'm going to infuse my oil with the spices because i find that uh, when you do infuse the oil with the spices the meat gets to draw all the spices from the oil and it doesn't get a uh, shade off whenever you add any liquid into that uh, dish so here i have the tenderloin i've already washed it and cut it into smaller pieces i'm going to mix everything well until the tenderloin gets all the flavors of the spices and then i'll be covering it let it cook with the juices that the tenderloin is going to release because definitely any meat has to release the juices so i've reduced the heat uh, to medium and then covered it on the other side i'm making the ham but this time i'm using quarter teaspoonful of the same spices that i did use making the tenderloin and then i'm going to add in this is half of uh the ham i'm going to also mix everything well until it's nicely coated and then i'm going to also cover it let it cook with the juices that it's going to release with also the fat that it has this time i did get the fatty ones and then i'm going to make some chicken wings with the chicken wings i want them a little bit spicy and also uh some savory and also some sweetness on it yeah such kind of mixture so i'm going to section it like th this i i understand that you all know how the chicken wings can be sectioned but the the bottom part this wing part here i'm not going to use it i'll be making i will be using it in stews so i'll just put it aside that small part over there on the edge and then that is a fly i'm tr i'm trying to fight i don't know where, why flies come in whenever somebody is making meats but it's okay these are seasons when you get to see flies around and they just get their way into the house so sometimes we just bear with them yeah so here i'm still sectioning them and then i'll ma marinate them i really love chicken wings i've made chicken wings several times in this channel and most of the time i get to try out new uh, recipes on my chicken wings don't just uh, bring anything to 
bake with uh, the chicken wings because some fruits don't really tolerate heat so it's good to see the kind of fruit that can actually uh, go well with the heat so um, I've, I'm adding in some uh, salt I did wash this chicken yeah I've cut and then did wash so I'm using one tablespoon of soy sauce this is pixie that was very very sweet extra sweet i did just squeeze the juice out this is curry powder like half teaspoon half teaspoon of the same as a uh, fenugreek i love fenugreek do you know fenugreek has really good aromas the same way that you would get the aromas from roiko is the same way you'll get from the fenugreek then i'm adding the same amount of that of the cumin powder this is the paste that i recently made when i was making jollof you can check out that video it's the previous video before this one it's it's a uh, spicy yeah i did use red peppers habanero and uh also uh some salt some tomatoes and some onions but it's a bit spicy so i've added that i'm going to cover this and let this marinate for 25 minutes because i have another spice i'm going to add later then i'm going to wipe this surface over here with maxel kitchen cleaner because we have handled a lot of meats here it's good to actually wipe off everything to avoid contamination and then i'm going to cut the onions that i'm going to use to cook uh, the meats and I'll be getting a little bit of help from my girl who will be cutting the tomatoes. So let's uh, cut these onions as we wait to uh, continue cooking the stews. Fifteen minutes later, the tenderloin is halfway cooked and it has released a lot of juices. So I've drained the juices, put them in a bowl. I'll be using them later. I'm adding in the onions and then I'll let the meat get the flavors of the onions. Cover this for five minutes and then I'll be back later. But before that, I'll be cutting down some uh, okra. I want to make okra soup. We really, really love okra soup. So I'm going to make okra soup, but this time I'm not going to use goat meat. I normally use goat meat in making my okra soup. This time I, I used herb meat and I'm glad I did use it because the flavors that came with the herb meat were just amazing. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can uh, tenderize your tenderize your tomatoes we all also your okra minus using a blender you don't need to blend everything like there's those people who don't have blenders but uh you can still make anything soft even minus using the the blender to get a, a soft uh, puree so i'm cutting these okras into smaller cubes though i love them blended but this time i decided let me just cut them into smaller cubes because this okra was very young and also very fresh when i got it from the market it's been in the fridge for a while At this point, the tenderloin has gotten the flavors of the onion, so I'm going to add some salt because I had not added the salt. I had my reasons why I had not added the salt, so I'm adding the salt at this point. And then I'm going to mix that well until the flavors are nicely combined. And then I'm going to actually spread the tomatoes on top of the meat. That is the only way you can get your tomatoes to be tender when you're not using a blender. So I'll spread the tomatoes, sprinkle some little bit of salt so that they can help in softening the tomatoes. Cover that with a foil so that when the foil is sweating, the, the steam released is the one that is going to soften these tomatoes. 
Cover with the lid so that the steam doesn't get to escape. Lower the heat and let that just cook slowly until it softens. It took like 10 minutes for me to be able to achieve that. I will repeat the same thing that I've done with the tenderloin. That is the same thing that I'm going to do with the hem. At this point the tomatoes are nicely soft and as you can see they've they just disappeared into the meat you can't even see the chunks of tomatoes i'm adding in the green peas because i want them to cook with the meat i wanted some peas into this meat and this meat is not yet tender so don't fear over cooking it because it's not even yet soft so i'm adding the peas inside let it cook for five minutes i'm going to add the water inside there but i'll add on one particular spot the reason why i normally do that is because i don't want to pour the water all over and wash down all those good flavors because we want these flavors to be observed nicely even into the piece i'm going to pour this in one spot then let it i'm not going to tamper with it i'm not even going to mix it then just cover it let it cook for like 10 minutes not five minutes 10 minutes then after that that is when i'll be adding in the carrots i don't like adding all the ingredients at once just throwing them inside trust me you'll not get the flavors that you need so here i want to make the greens and with my greens i'm just going to use tomatoes and some onions that's all i'm going to use and some cream that i've been keeping away so uh the, i'm going to cover this so that we can soften the tomatoes but i'm not going to use the foil since uh not everyone can be using the foil i'll cover that spot that has a hole on the lid i, I will cover that with either a paper or uh maybe some foil a little bit of uh, the foil paper and then cover that hole so that the steam doesn't get to disappear from uh, through that hole so that the steam gets to cook the tomatoes until they soften so that is the same thing i'm going to do with cooking these uh, greens The tomatoes in the hem have also uh, softened nicely so i'm going to add in the okra give it a good mix until it's well combined with the hem and then uh, add in a little bit of water cover it let it cook for five minutes and we will be done with that on this other side i want to start now cooking the greens i'll just add them into the mixture of tomatoes give it a good mix and then i'll be adding in the cooking cream that i always collect 
from the milk that I do get to boil. I love such kind of cream, though I don't like adding cream into all my greens. There are specific greens that I do I do prefer adding the cream into. Like this one is a must. Like I got used to uh, well, while I was young, so I really love that combination. I'm going to mix this well until the greens get all the tomatoes. That is when I'll be adding the cream. Cover it, let it cook for also five minutes and we will be done with this part of the cooking. I'm adding more extra flavors. These are fenugreek powder and some curry powder and garam masala. I really had to add that so that we can get more flavors inside there after cooking uh, that meat. More so, the fenugreek was much needed because that uh, spice really smells so nice. So I'm going to garnish this with coriander and it's done. I will be doing the same thing to the other meat as well. At this point the chicken is nicely marinated so i'm going to add in the ingredient that i really wanted to add i'm going to add in smoked paprika i could have added this ingredient from the beginning but this is the point when i get to add it i'm going to give it uh, a very good mix and then i'm going to bake this chicken this chicken this is how i'm going to bake it i will just put it on the foil cover with an extra foil for like 10 minutes let it bake for 10 minutes on high heat and then i will lower the heat let it bake for another uh, 10 minutes and then after that i will uncover it uh, completely then uh, bake it on direct flame for five minutes on low heat until it's nicely brown and then i'll be just uh, removing it but before that later as it continues to like baking i'll be pulling it out apply some uh, the rest of the marinade that will be remaining on the bowl but i'll be brushing that marinade now uh, just to uh, give it a uh, extra nice uh, red color or, ra or rather orange color and then later i'll be brushing uh, the rest of the marinade still i uh, brush some oil for some shininess so that it doesn't get too dry I really tried making puff pastry like two times and it really did backfire on me 
and i tried again for the last time like i was losing my patience so i tried for the last time with this recipe and it came through uh, nicely i had done just a little one like the other there's a video i did show you and told you that i'll bring the recipe so that is the one i did so i've used like two cups of uh, all-purpose flour and i've used like a quarter of sugar a quarter cup of sugar a pinch of salt and also that is 250 grams of butter that i did cut into smaller pieces though i did put it in the fridge to chill a little bit and then i'm using icy water extremely cold water to knead this dough so i'll be adding bit by bit and then knead the dough I'm not going to knead the dough like I'm kneading bread. Some people do add yeast, but I did not add yeast. I find this one uh, working perfectly well because when I tried with the yeast, it came out uh, bready like. It's hard layers, but it came out bready like. So I don't want uh, that one. I just want uh, the, the normal, nice uh, layered croissant with a cracky. Uh, sound on it so this is the recipe that i did try i'll link the everything in the description box so i'll knead this nicely until it comes together but i'm not going to need like i would need uh, other dolls i'll need this like uh, two minutes and then uh, put it in a uh, wrap it in a clean film and then toss it in the fridge to sit there for like uh, 20 minutes and then we shall be continuing I'll just wrap it like this put it in the fridge i did put in the freezer section and let it chill there for like 45 minutes i decided to go for 40, 45 minutes so here our chicken is uh, almost done i'll uncover it and then apply the extra juices that came uh, with the marinade and then later on i'll apply some oil as i had said so that we can uh, Keep it looking all shiny and doesn't look too dry. These wings are nicely baked. They are extra golden brown. They have cooked evenly and they have nice flavors. I hope you get to also try this recipe because it's amazing. So after 40 minutes, we are going to start making the, now start the folding part where I keep rolling out the dough. Even if it looks uh, a little bit rough, it will just come together and eventually as we roll out, it will just become smooth. So I'll use the dough. Did I say I also did put these uh, rolling pin in the fridge just to maintain everything to be cold because we are using butter and butter tends to melt so quickly. So we don't want it to melt. That is why everything has to be cold. So I, I'll start rolling it out, fold it like I did so many folds so that I don't get to go wrong because already i did use the right ingredients so i had to actually do many folds so has to be sure i did like 15 folds it took me so many hours to actually do this because i started this uh at the time i was still cooking all the meals and then we went up to even the next day in the morning as i got to finish making everything from this uh dough so i'll keep rolling uh return in the fridge for after every 
After every roll and folding, I get to, re to wrap it, return it in the fridge for like 25 to 30 minutes. There is a time I did even 35 minutes, but I did not use now the freezer. I did use the next compartment after the freezer. That is the place that I did use. So I returned into that place for like, I think that 35 minutes in each uh, fold. Yeah. So that is what I did. This is what I'm going to continue doing as I break in between to actually do other meals. So this is the first batch of the meals that is already done. I'm yet to do other meals, so we'll continue with the puff pastry. This is the last part of uh, this pastry. It's been a long day doing that. So finally, I want now to cut it into smaller pieces, get to bake one part of uh, the piece and then the other piece, I'll put it in the fridge until tomorrow when I'll make now sausage rolls as I prepare other meals.
at this point i want to make uh, beans and githeri i did cook this overnight so i want to start now frying them i'm adding onions into my oil and then uh, with this i'll be using just a little bit of turmeric and curry powder in all the legumes that i'm going to make that is only beans and uh, githeri so i'll be adding turmeric and also some curry powder and some tomatoes and then i'll let them uh, soften then add in the beans I want to cook some chicken breast i'm adding some oil and also some butter because i just want this chicken breast to taste uh, garlicky so i'm going to add in a few uh, chopped onions and also chopped garlic after that the only spice i'm using here is garam masala and then i'll be adding in the chicken mix well add in a little bit of tomato paste and also will be adding in some natural yogurt. I love chicken breast and they really taste so good when you put in a little bit of natural yogurt. Some natural yogurt just makes it have some tanginess instead of using lemon. You can uh, substitute with the natural yogurt. So I'll garnish that uh, with some coriander and uh, that is it for that chicken breast. And this I will be serving with some salads because I really love salads but I love it when it has uh, some chicken bread so next i am going to make also some broccoli those are some of the vegetables that i want to include in this meal prepping with this broccoli i've just added butter and then i'm going to saute this broccoli just uh, to steam it a little bit and then add uh, some sliced onions so that we can just good uh, get good flavors from also this broccoli i'll add i've sprinkled a little bit of salt cover it for like five minutes then mix well and then 
I think that is it for the broccoli because I don't want to overcook it and this can be consumed for like three in in the next three days I don't want it to overstay in the fridge because I had it I just had to also cook it I have some smokies that I want to make some uh, smoky pastry the, the pastry that I did make I just want to make some smoky rolls so I I just want to just uh, brown them in my pan and then I the sheets I had kept those sheets in the fridge because this is the next day like yesterday I overworked myself I got tired I couldn't continue so this one I finished today so I'm making the smoky rolls that is why I'm rolling them on the pastry that I had made with this pastry when you have excess you can just put them in the you can cut uh, parchment papers as you layer them and then put them in the Ziploc bag, store them in the freezer as long as you want. You will always be getting them from the freezer and making them. Otherwise, it takes a long time to do to make this, but I think it's more worth it compared to actually buying a paste pastry that somebody else has made. If somebody else out there has made it and is able to sell it i think you can also make uh, make your own by trying various recipes of the puff uh, pastry so i'm going to make these rolls brush some egg white egg wash on them and then i'll just leave them in the oven for like 15 minutes and they, they'll be done puff pastry doesn't uh, require a lot of time and then i want to make some lemon cake i'm also including some snacks uh for the kids to carry to school in this meal prep i honestly don't want to come back in the kitchen for the next one week until all the foods are finished that is when i'll be able now to actually even buy snacks from the shop or maybe just make others instead of going to buy again so that is lemon cake i've just added some lemon zest and also some butter i've used some sugar mix that together then now i'm squeezing out the juice of the lemon uh juice the lemon uh the lemon itself that i'm going to add into that mixture mix it well I normally don't like using milk in my cake but this time I did use it and it was okay this I'm not making a lemon cake I'm making lemon muffins yeah so I'm going to add in the lemon uh, juice uh, mix that well I'll still repeat the same thing with uh, the cake that I want to throw in a little bit of raspberries so I will also be making that as part of the kids uh, snacks to carry to school
Mm. I love how my puff pastry did turn out. It's so good. It's so flaky. So next, I'm making plantains. I want to bake them. These are plantain. If you've never come across such a uh, huge plantains, yes, they do exist. These are not normal bananas. So I'm going to cut them into smaller pieces, sprinkle a little bit of salt, and then bake them in my oven until they are golden brown. Mm. So for the remaining raspberries, I want to make a raspberry glaze for that uh, raspberry cake. I've added in some icing sugar, some lemon juice. I'm going to cook this for like uh, 10 minutes as I keep stirring it until uh, it's nicely cooked. Sieve it and just drizzle it on the cake and it looks so, so good. The remaining uh, glaze, I'm going to keep it. I did also bake uh, the peanuts. I did not show that on camera but I baked the peanuts after soaking them for like 20 minutes. So those are the puff pastry they are done. These are the plantains. These are peanuts. I'm going to keep them as well. They'll come in handy for breakfast or for a snack. And um, these foods are just enough for two weeks for me and my family. If you've been here and watching this video up to this point, thank you so much. Thank you all for being here, for watching and also for taking your time to actually uh, look at the recipe that I did have today. I hope you got to borrow one or two or maybe got to learn one, uh, one or two things. Thank you so much. Until next time. Bye.